American Psycho has shown itself to become some sort of monolith in popular consciousness when it comes to its humor and its commentary through characterization. Beyond its iconic comedic scenes or its simple mocking tone, what has kept it within people's minds has been over its relatability, or what some people may view as its commentary in this vein. The relatability factor of Bateman is always argued, typically due to a sense of irony in his usage of whatever format it may crop up in. I think the difference between movie and novel has helped to misconstrue a bit of this idea in the many interpretations people come to, and this video will be focusing foremost on the novel. I believe that Bateman is actually supposed to be relatable, though maybe not for the reasons that this may be the case for some. In fact, this idea forms the core theme of the story that I think makes it so striking, and to dismiss Bateman as a you were never supposed to relate to them sort of character nullifies the narrative of the story. One of the very first scenes that establishes the world of American Psycho comes in the tunnel, where we are introduced to Paul Allen, or Owen in the novel, as well as abruptly saying farewell to his opposite, Timothy Price. Price in the movie differs from his depiction in the novel, being called instead Bryce, and only being another person within the group, though Bateman still refers to him as the only interesting person he knows. The contrast between how Bateman views Allen and Price within the novel is key. Paul Allen appears to be more successful than Bateman. His apartment looks richer, he is supposedly able to get reservations at Dorsia, and he's apparently handling the Fisher account, an object of obsession for Bateman. Meanwhile, Price is actually richer than Bateman, owning an extravagant vacation home that he and Evelyn visit, and seems to openly be having an affair with Bateman's fiance that he even sustains within his presence. Despite this, Bateman has nothing but a tinge of admiration for Price, and a nothing but absolute hatred for Alan. In the tunnel, as we were previously referring to, Price, after his coke binge with Bateman, states emphatically that he is leaving. Bateman is completely confused and can only ask where he is leaving or going to, which further dismays Price. In the end, Price leaves this, he disappears as he runs across the tracks of the tunnel and does not reappear until the very end of the novel. In all of Price's interactions with the rest of the troop of characters, he states flatly and coldly the shallowness of their circumstances with women and material, often as a rebuttal towards their common boasting. This only ever touches the group's humor and invokes the simple and ironic phrase, Price, you're priceless. The beginning of the novel is so dominated by Price's voice that you would be mistaken for him as the protagonist at first. He seems to act as a demonstration of Bateman's internal structure and the dynamics of the world around him as we enter it. The hollowness of his relationships and thereby the hollowness of his soul. We see the depths of this after Price's disappearance, where Bateman is finally left alone. The only outwardly defining characteristic for Bateman is in his purported psychopathy, his fascination with and compulsion to murder, torture, and cannibalize others. All of his other purported interests or hobbies are manic obsessions of vanity. His interests in music, restaurants, clothes, watches, tatting beds, etc are all of course a thinly veiled way of fitting in while still attempting to assert superiority out of his internal hatred. The movie doesn't entirely capture the absolutely hateful tone of the novel, and despite how hateful Bateman can be, even if it may be directed towards the wrong person at times, there is a sense you can't fully blame him. The world around him is itself shallow and even evil. Bateman's days are passed by reserving lunches, going to clubs, trying to woo women, going on numbing drug binges, 
and discussing all of it again with his group of quote-unquote friends. Characters are described by what brand clothing and smells they have. In an ironic bit, we can see Lewis doesn't quite fit in and is trying too hard with his dress, even coming with a business card much later than the original scene. Bateman's monologuing becomes delirious at points as the mixture of drugs and tedium of even living in this world makes everything non-distinct. Bateman and the others mistake random people you don't know for other people you don't know. Bateman himself is called several different names by anyone and everyone. Bateman at least appears to be aware enough to see how terrible and boring this all is which is exactly what drives him to kill. Otherwise, living in this world would be impossible. Bateman's murders and rapes, wherever you choose to believe they are fantastical, real, or a mixture of both, become the only way he sees to express himself. They often arise as an externalization of particular feelings that would be too embarrassing to display publicly for the sake of vanity. Shared between novel and movie, he murders Paul Allen out of a sense of being inadequate to others. He murders an old lover in Bathany because of how he sees himself from his past self. He dictates over and murders prostitutes in order to feel power and control over something, some situation in his life, which becomes the same for his torturing and experimentation. Bereft of what it even means to be human anymore, he sifts through the blood and bones of his victims in wonder. Bateman often commentates about being unable to contain his murderous desires, and how they only seem to worsen at times until they are uncontrollable. His killings seem to become more frequent and more brutal as the novel progresses. He lapses into an emotional outburst after one particularly gruesome altercation with a power drill, chanting how he just wants to be loved. The inability to ever satisfy his desires and their burgeoning demand itself stems from his deteriorating condition, still within the rat race that is his world. This eventually culminates into an action he takes finally within the daytime, his breakup with Evelyn. Bateman's breakup with Evelyn in both versions of the story serve as the final event of the novel, which itself devolves quickly into a drug-induced psychotic break for Bateman. Evelyn represents something quite simple, commitments. She herself asks for marriage, and for Bateman, this symbolizes chaining himself to the world that he scorns, to a woman that he feels nothing for. He even tries to salvage it all, going on vacation for a sizable period of time with Evelyn at Price's vacation home, mostly by themselves. No killings, no Wall Street, nothing. But it doesn't matter. He begins imitating murder and repeating his old habits. She begins taking trips back to New York in between their vacation, and eventually they return by their own choice. For Bateman, his breakup with Evelyn was supposed to be something of a break from this world. He even imitates Price when he states himself to be leaving and just leaving, which confuses Evelyn who asks him where. In the end, however, he states himself to be going somewhere. He is left with no fulfillment and resultantly descends further into a hallucinatory state full of brazen murder, police chases, and explosions of guilt. Bateman's internal conflict causes him to both not want to be discovered for his crimes so he can continue fitting in, and wanting to be judged because of his total hatred for the world around him. However, the way he directs this hatred betrays his intentions, and reveals how deeply he has internalized the corrupting influences of that world. Bateman believed, perhaps unconsciously, that such fantasies and murders were the evil and in some way freed him. But they were nothing. They don't matter. The world he inhabits is already steeped in evil that his shadow and his external self are nothing more than another thing produced by it. The first words of the novel are scrawled on the wall of an alleyway as his car passes by. 
abandon hope, all ye who enter. The inscribed message of the gates of hell in Dante's Divine Comedy. Bateman, in the most significant bit of psychology the novel has to offer, says he is fabricated, a non-contingent human being, and that his personality is sketchy and unformed. At the same time, he calls himself blameless. Is evil something you are, or something you do? Is Bateman the way he is because of the world around him influencing him that way? Or was he by nature predisposed towards evil? That is to ask, are humans born with sin? If the world around us does not cultivate the good and only the evil, then it does not cultivate anything at all. Because evil cannot create anything. This hell cannot create a person, it only subsumes. More than being a philosophical quandary, this is a confusion that Bateman has been produced from. Near the end of the novel, Price makes an abrupt return from it as they continually refer. His demeanor is unusual and we see him almost prodding Bateman for something. By the end of all that has happened in the novel, Bateman is still engaging in the same depravity and experiences the same dissonance, if not worse than he did previously. He comments that he's taking his disintegration in stride as his group of friends conversation goes completely by him even more than before, until Price pricks his interest. While Reagan gives a speech on TV, a bewildered Price picks Bateman's brain with his considerations on the man and the man inside. But inside doesn't matter. Through evil, Bateman has become wicked. He even shows awareness that he is punished through living in this hell. But of guilt? He does not know if he should be guilty for it or not. He knows no good or evil. He's never seen the distinction. He neither believes nor disbelieves in anything. Because he does not know anything, because he will not or perhaps does not even know how to accept his own guilt, he finds no escape from hell. The novel ends with him facing a door on which the words are inscribed. This is not an exit. <laughs>